In 1884, Angelo Moriondo of Turin secured a patent and commenced building machines with burners at the bottom of an upright boiler. His machine was equipped with water level and steam pressure gauges, as well as a safety valve and a quick mount handle. His design allowed the operator to control the amount of water and steam used in the brewing process. Many folks consider this the first espresso machine, but it had one design quirk not seen on modern machines. It could brew 30 espressos at a time, with a brew basket large enough to fit around 600 grams of ground coffee. In 1901, Luigi Bezzera released the Gigante machine. Bezzera's machine performed almost exactly the same as Moriondo's, except that the group heads were designed to fit single-serve portafilters. Bezzera's brew-to-order approach allowed for greatly improved access for cleaning and helped to ensure that coffee could finally be made to order expressly for each individual customer. Within a year of securing his patent, Bezzera established a business relationship with a family friend named Desiderio Pavoni. By 1902, Pavoni had purchased Bezzera's patent, and both parties seemed to have agreed that each of the respective companies could build their own versions of more or less the same design. Although the precise details of their working relationship were unknown, Pavoni's Idela machine was featured at the 1906 Milan Fair on a stand bearing Bezzera's name. The Idela was to become the first widely available, commercially successful, large-scale pressurized coffee machine. Luigi Giolotto of Turin, Italy, made the breakthrough in 1909 when he invented the first known pump machine. Although no Giolotto machines are known to exist today, this machine was groundbreaking because it, for the first time, separated steam pressure and brewing pressure. A hand-powered water pump pushed water through a heat exchanger located inside the machine's boiler. An air pump was then used to dry out the puck after the extraction was completed. A year after Giolotto pioneered the bike pump approach, another advance from using steam pressure for extraction came with the introduction of the screw piston. In his 1910 patent design, Pierre Terezio Arduino added a batch brewing group head to a large-scale upright boiler design. It had an ordinary portafilter on one side and a large screw piston on the other. After water entered the group head, the operator of the machine could simply twist the screw to squeeze the water through the coffee. Arduino seemed to have abandoned the idea soon after patenting it, because later patents made no mention of the idea. The screw piston concept resurfaced one more time in a new patent from Antonio Cremonese. Unfortunately, Cremonese died soon after securing the patent at the age of 42. His wife, Rosetta Scorza, inherited his patents and sold the screw piston concept to Giovanni Achille Gaggia, who paid her a thousand lira, valued at around a thousand euros in 2021. In 1942, machine maker La San Marco designed an espresso machine which for the first time featured a horizontal boiler. Soon after La San Marco's horizontal machine was made, architect Gio Ponti produced this extraordinary design for La Pavoni in 1947. In 1945, Ernesto Volante co-founded the Fama Manufacturing Company, which in their early years produced a range of household goods, including hair dryers. In 1947, Volante met Gaja and became Gaja's official manufacturing partner until 1950. In a new patent, Gaja redesigned the Cremonese screw piston, replacing the screw with a lever and heavy spring, designed to drive the piston downwards towards the coffee puck. Extractions could now occur at far higher pressures than had previously been achievable. The first machine was installed in one of Milan's busiest cafes, the Danini de San Babala. For several years, Fama continued to produce their own lever machines, licensing the rights to use Gaja's group head design. The 1950s was a period of great experimentation for the company. Their Presidente lever machine from early 1957 was in fact a dual boiler machine, in a configuration that paved the way for the first pump-driven dual boiler machine. But a new concept emerged at the end of the 1950s, which would take over as the most influential template for group head design going forwards into the second half of the 20th century. Feynman named the new machine Termo Riscaldamento Regalado, Italian for Adjustable Thermal Heating, or TRR. About a year later, the machine, because of its distinctive styling, became known as the Tartaruga, 
or tortoise. The TRR featured an electric-powered rotary pump and a dual boiler system. This allowed baristas to adjust the brew water temperature without having to alter the steam boiler pressure. 